Well, finally, there's a point of painting this boat, which means we're just nearly done with it. We've got some rust-oleum here, black, we're putting on the hull. Now, a little trick, I don't know if you've ever seen this, I like to do. Turn it toward the label so you don't cover the instructions. Take a nail, and right in that lowest part of the rim, put you two or three holes. Gives the paint something to drain back out of that rim and make it easier to get it off. I found these nice little containers that look really good. We'll see, because I like to paint with, I believe these are four inch, these are the bigger rollers, not the little hot dog rollers. And this looks just ideal because I can carry it around. So I'm going to put a little black in here and I've got to thin it. If these don't want to stand up, I'm hoping when it gets painted here it'll make it bottom heavy enough it will. They do stand up. And I will take a roller, flip that excess there. Now I need to thin this. Your first coat, I always thin it. Rust Oleum recommends acetone, so that's what I use. You want your first coat thin so that the paint will soak into the fabric. And then it soaks in not so much for protection but for looks. That way when you look inside your boat, if you paint one with a brush on the inside and you paint it straight, it's going to have light and dark spots, it's going to be blotchy, it looks horrible. And I did that on a couple of them and hated it. So that's when I got the idea of thinning it and trying it and it works really good. It doesn't take much thinner so just put a little bit in, stir it up, try it, you can add more. You can't take it out. And I can see that's not enough. I knew it wouldn't be. And I've probably got too much paint in here for one coat looking at this. So a little more thinner. That feels better. You don't want it water thin, but so just thin enough to, to soak through. So I'm gonna try to grab a piece of scrap here. Been cleaning up this morning before I started painting, so I've got plenty of scrap laying around. I've normally thrown it away, but my trash can has been full, so it's been laying on the floor. I've got a paintbrush here. Where did it go? I was using earlier. So we'll just try a little spot and see what, see how well it soaks through. Yes, is that's not thin enough. Yeah, see how? Let's get up close. See how it's kind of blotchy? Or I don't know if you can. I don't think you can see it there, but it's actually it's soaking in okay. Oh, it's just too quick. So that looks good. I'm surprised. This this new fabric soaks seems to soak up real well. So I'm going to use that. Set this aside. Now this is my dedicated painting table. So let's move the camera and we'll start painting the boat. First step is I paint the threads around the combing. The paint will protect the thread from UV damage, prevent them from degrading and falling apart. When we paint the green on the top side, we can't reach all the way under the combing, so the paint will not soak through on the exposed edge. So at this point, I paint the inside exposed edges black to match the combing. All right, first coat's on. Let it dry overnight and ready to put the second coat on. Uh, it's a little uneven, which I knew it would be. It's hard to put the first coat on even, but stressing the importance of it, of it being thin because that really soaked through. I'll show you the inside shots. Inside looks really good. A uh, little blotchy out here, but that's fine. But this should seal the fabric. This time it shouldn't soak in, and it should start to lay on top of there and start to get a really glossy finish after this coat. Okay, well, I put this coat of paint on. I want to talk about something. A misconception I see in the forums, and yes, you're entitled to your opinion, you can build your boat your way, uh, but one thing I see mentioned sometimes 
is they talk about putting enough paint on to fill the weave, meaning they, they fill this weave full of paint and, sm and make it smooth. Well, that's a bad idea. Paint is a thin film coating. You read up the manufacturer's information. I've read some of this, not that I understood all of it, but uh, excuse me. But when you read what the manufacturers say, they don't say put it on thick. They say it's thin. They actually give uh, some of the some of it, depending on what you're what you're doing, will give you mill thicknesses. I believe it is where you can special tool you can measure how thick the paint is, and they wanted a specific thickness. And it's never thick enough to fill the weave. Filling the weave is a term used in canvas boats. They fill the weave, but they do it with filler a material specifically for that. And a canvas boat doesn't flex like this. Their fabric is supported by wood structure. Airs flexes. And paint, if it gets too thick, will crack. Uh, create other problems too, but the main thing being is it gets too thick, it cracks, and it doesn't dry evenly. So don't try putting on 10, 12 coats to fill the weave. Your coating on this is just to the purpose of waterproofing and, of course, cosmetics. But uh, we're not here to fill the weave with this. If you want a, you know, a smooth boat, you need to build a plywood boat or a, or a, a stripper. You know, these are not these are fabric covered, and I think they should look like fabric covered. So save yourself some grief and follow the manufacturer's instructions. Okay, we got started on this one, and first step, then this paint. Boy, this is, I can't get over how thick this is. Uh, get over here. I taped off the combing to keep the green off there. You've got to get up under this edge, and there's no way to do that with a roller, so you just take your paintbrush, and that's why I tape them off so I can be sloppy. I can just work that way up under there, seal all that. And as I was saying, you've got to seal the seams. So I start down through here uh, before I do the roller. Is I brush on kind of a heavy coat, moderately heavy, and work it into those corners in there. That that it seam in there is is a hard one to get to paint on. So take that. I like this little brush. As I said, I prefer oil-based paint on these because it's just a much better uh, durability on them. Now this is water-based. Being on the top side, I'm not worried about it. It doesn't get scratched and uh, banged around like the bottom does. So it'll be fine here, but I was reluctant to give in, but just really didn't have any choice. Now one thing I didn't talk about, I just filmed it. Yeah, and I take this off because see this boat's two tones, green on top, black on bottom. I like to come over just in the edge and tape there. And the tape I use is a high adhesion tape. I found that uh, a low, like a blue painter's tape, does not grip well on this fabric. And because of the texture uh, of the fabric, you've got to go back and really press that down into that weave, uh, or else you're not going to get a good line on your paint. Uh, you'll come back and look at it you're going to have a lot of paint places where it seeped under. And I may still have some anyway, but a black. These little brushes are great for touching that up. But I put that on there. High adhesion tape. Good brand 3M. And then I made my little burnishing tool you probably saw me use. It's just one of my dowels. I chuck it in the lathe and a rasp and sand it over and then file it. I mean sand it real, real smooth. And I can go back and really bear down on that tape and make sure it has a good grip. Yes, I'm still painting with a disposable brush. No, I'm not rolling. 
reason for that. I'm fond of saying that I have a great memory. It's just kind of short. Well, it's been jogged this morning trying to get this paint on here. Alright, you can see the mixing tray. I did mix this paint up uh, in a roller. I, I brushed everything else on the tips and the trims and all that. And I I tried to bristle brush, but didn't work good. Of course, I don't have, it's not a specific for a latex, so that probably helped. Uh, hurt, rather. But I started thinning this stuff. As I say, this stuff is thick. I mean, it, it's, it's the thickest paint I have ever seen, bar none. Um, tried thinning it down, and I tried thinning it some more, and I tried thinning it some more, and the bottom line is, it will not roll on good. I got scared to thin it anymore. It may be fine. Um, customer vote, I'm not going to do that. So I stopped, and the problem with the roller is, it's just too thick. You're putting it on thick, thin, thick, thin, thick, thin, thick, thin, and you keep rolling it back, and it's hard to get it even because it soaks in the fabric. So I gave up. Um, trip and I got to thinking about something and I grabbed this little brush and I tried the bristle brush as I said this didn't work and I grabbed this and I remember years ago and I think I did a painting video one of my early attempts at videos and I believe I was bragging about these little brushes in there if I remember right and it must have been latex paint because frankly this is the tool for latex this works better than the roller by far because the roller didn't work at all the bristle brush didn't work too good, but again, that may be because I didn't. I need one made for latex. Um, this works great because this paint is so thick. I can put it on there. It lays on the top, and then I can spread it around. I can bear down a little. It's not leaving bristle marks. I'll just have to look back and go over it because it is thick. You got to make sure to get it even. There's a spot I missed. So, go back, give it a minute to dry, and I can see sometimes where where I didn't get it real even. But this just works better than rollers. If you're doing one in latex, I'd say skip the roller. Um, well, if you haven't figured it out by now, I have kind of high standards. Uh, I'm less picky on a boat for myself. I don't worry about it because I use mine. I skin them up and I abuse them a little bit. But when I'm doing one for a customer, I take a pretty high standard of what I, I want perfection, but that's not possible. But there comes a point where you just have to give up and say, it's done. And I've reached that point. I worked on the paint on this one, and I still see things that I don't like. But, you know, it's just, you can't, I can't do perfection. So it's time for the big reveal. Let's peel off the paint. And let's peel off the tape and see what we have. I like those colors. Now here comes the real test. We're going to peel off the little, the actual edge where I painted to and see how good it looks. Wow. I'm a happy camper. That looks good. Well, I can honestly say I am very happy with this. This tape stuck a little too well. My burnishing might have been a little bit much. Probably could have gotten by with just uh, putting it on there and doing it by hand. But I'm pleased. Uh, it's looking very good. Um, I always have a little spots where it's rubbed up under, uh, excuse me, soaked under the tape in the past. But I really haven't found any yet, so I am very happy with this one.